Hey guys, Cameron Blagan here, and I am just doing a video on how to flash your um, SP Racing um, F3 board, uh, specifically for the Force One RC DYS XDR220. Um, but this will work for just about any Seriously Pro F3 SP F3 racing board. Um, but I'm going to be doing the specific ones for that drone, so link to that in the description if you want to see how to do that. Uh, so let's get started here. I'm using the beta flight. This is the same thing for a clean flight with one little change. Um, as I go on the video, all the links will be in the description as down below, so you won't have to type them in. You can just click them and use them there. So first off, um, if you've done this before, you'll notice if you try to flash your board um, without doing this step, you might get some STM errors. It'll come up and it'll say like, STM32 communication failed wrong response expected or you know no response from bootload or something like that so what we're gonna do is a couple things so I'm gonna pull up some links I have here and again all these are gonna be in the description so first off you're gonna go and again I'm doing beta flight but I'm gonna put a link for it clean flight in there so this is the clean flight one I'm gonna X out of here you're gonna scroll down or search and you're gonna find the SPF3 or excuse me SP racing F3, Seriously Pro Racing, F3. You're just going to find the plain one here, and you're going to find the highest number. So you can see right now, this is all the most recent downloads, not the 1.6. We're at the 1.3.17. Going to download the beta flight here. So it's downloading there, and then I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to um, save that to my desktop, or it'll be in your downloads folder. So now what we're going to do is go to this other link here. This is the STM8 flasher, um, and that is why you get an error, because you need to use an STM8 flasher instead of an STM32, which is what Betaflight uses. Um, so you see the website here, you scroll down, and there is all these things, but you have this one here, it says part number, marketing status, blah, 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 get software. Now you may have to log in to do this. Uh, you just hit accept, and log in, register, um, or you can just type in first name, last name, email, and I've done this and never got a error. Then you click download, um, then you need to validate your email address and then the download will start. So X out of that and then you'll need to validate that email uh, or you can just make an account if that's the way you want to go. So I'm going to go ahead and go validate that real fast um, and in that email will be a link to download that software. I'm going to click that, I'll drag it over here and it's loading, pops up here, it's processing request and you see there it started to download. When it's finished downloading you're just going to drag it to a nice spot, uh, in this case I'm going to put it on my desktop and you see there uh, and then you're going to need to extract it. It will not work while it's in a zip file. Uh, once it's extracted this will pop up right here and so this is what you're going to need to use. So now if you ever need to use this again um, and oh, it, this is my folder here, so I saved the uh, hex file in here, uh, so that will not come with it. I'll delete that just so we're not confused. If you do want to use this, uh, when you click this, I've already used it, so this will be a good example. Uh, it'll pop up preparing to install. next and then you're gonna need to remove it and then re-download it if you've already used it before you'll need administrator privileges for that so I'll cut to when this is uninstalled and finish and that won't launch it <clears throat> now when you do want to launch it again um, and it's kind of annoying you have to do this every time but you just gotta click on it and it will install Since you enter in your name there's my old username blah 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 install we'll cut to when we get there alright so we're gonna go ahead and not show the readme file one thing I did notice in there is it does say if you need to uh, use it again you have to uninstall reinstall kind of annoying but hey this is out there and it's free so I'm not complaining we're gonna go ahead and open it and here's what you see so what you're gonna wanna do is set your your uh, baud rate there baud rate whatever um, to the correct number and that is going to be da, 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 right here uh, two five six zero 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 four three zero excuse me um, so all this is fine and you're going to click next oh but before then 
And so before that, you see there's no ports here. So you're going to hit the boot button. Now, if you're following along with the XDR220, uh, there's a little button next to the USB plug-in. You have to take off the uh, cover, the top, the red top cover that houses the camera. Be careful because there are things connected there. And there's a little label, or a little button labeled boost. That's supposed to be the boot button. Uh, they just printed it incorrectly in the factory, I guess. So you're going to hold down on that button and plug in your USB. And you'll hear some beeps. I'm going to go ahead and let go of that. All right, so you'll see then you click here and COM3 comes up and we're going to set the baud rate to uh, this 256,000 um, right there and that's in the manual of the, um, the XDR220 um, and I think it's standard for all SP racing boards but I'm not sure so check your manual on that one <clears throat> now um, if you do have some difficulty getting the COM3 to pop up you're gonna wanna make sure that you're not you don't have any beta flights, clean flights, Libre flight, anything like that open um, and also if it doesn't work uninstall it again so you can reopen it uh, hit the boot button, plug up the drone, and right before you click the next on open program. Um, and then you're going to hit next. Target is readable. You may have to click remove protection here. And you got to, I mean, you, it's kind of scary, but you do need to do that before you get in. So you should see something up here like STM32 like that. Um, if not, then you may have the wrong board. So be careful there. Uh, if you're going there, we're going to hit next. And we're going to go download to device download from file and this is where we're gonna find that file you're gonna wanna go in your downloads and you're gonna wanna check hex files and you see here I have two of them uh, just because I have downloaded one recently and you're gonna use the most recent either beta flight clean flight double click that guy and then here we are uh, you see all there you're gonna just leave the settings as is hit next and it's erasing the old flash and it's gonna reflash the new one downloading the data and you'll get this nice green bar download operation finished successfully. So you're gonna close that guy, and now it will, you don't have to do that every time. I'm gonna delete the extracted file there, or unextracted. It won't do that every time. You can open up beta flight now, and uh, you can see connect to the same. Um, so you're gonna wanna unplug this, this key thing. Unplug this, replug it. You'll hear the beeps there. Same manual right here same board but now you can choose this from here you don't have to do anything else download firmware online and you're not gonna hold the boot button for this one that's a key note it will not work if you do um, but if it doesn't seem to work you can try the other way I've downloaded it online and now it is flashing and you'll be able to flash all the most updated um, boards now because it's reset how it can flash using that STM32 and that is how you flash your board so please let me know if, in the comments if you guys have any questions uh, it's pretty basic procedure, um, but it can get tedious if you don't know how to do it. Uh, to sum up, you're going to want to download the new, the newest version of the firmware off the uh, GitHub site, which all these links are in description again. You're going to want to download the STM8 flasher, flash the board with the correct firmware that you just downloaded, and then you can use Betaflight to flash from then on. You can see um, it'll connect. Oh, we've got to unplug it once first here. It'll connect right after that. So there you go. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video and it was helpful. Uh, please feel free to leave your comments below. Leave this a like if it helped you out um, and share to help others. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys again in another video.